Uh, yeah, hi everyone. Um, I'm Franz. I work with a small uh, worker-owned collective in Freiburg, Germany, uh, called Arso Collective. And today I'll talk about um, a project we've been working on in the past month called um, Repco. Um, the the project um, emerged from um, some quite long-going discussion between different um, community media outlets throughout Europe. So, uh, what is uh, community media? Um, when, I, when we talk about community media, we mostly mean like small media outlets that are not, um, uh, not commercial media outlets and that are not like uh, public broadcasters, state affiliated media. So uh, community radio stations, um, independent journalist, journalistic publishers, um, DIY video sites, archives of social movements, all these smallish outlets that you find throughout the internet where people publish media, create media, um, often rely on, on volunteers or on, on little funding, um, very DIY-focused DIY often, um, grassroots-based um, and um, democratically organized usually. And um, these kind of, th this kind of publishing has some um, particular challenges, um, especially in, 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 the, in, in the technical part of it. Um, they often have little resources, so no big funds to invest into big solutions of their own. And also they often, out of different reasons, don't want to rely too much on, on big tech companies or on like, like YouTube and, and the other big media um, uh, platforms um, because, well, uh, they often want to keep their independence and not rely on too much on external infrastructure out of experience um, that were made. Um, yeah, so this project um, in concrete was um, started about a year ago um, at a conference in, in Austria where um, a few outlets came together. Um, the C C Cultural Broadcasting Archive in Austria is the biggest of them and also um, Freie Radios Net in Germany, which is um, which are both platforms that emerge out of the community radio movements um, and that collect media from different um, outlets. And, and these platforms um, and a few others, like uh, Media CCC, like uh, from the KS Computer Club, some people were there and, and also some people from Spain from, from a radio platform. Um, they had this long-standing desire to kind of get out of their bubbles and, and not have these separate platforms because that makes it really hard to, to compete in a way with big tech platforms because that's what you do in the end if you want to reach people and if you want to build up audiences. And um, all these platforms are based on quite old tech stacks usually. Some use WordPress, some uh, use like custom, very old PHP code. There's some mod more modern tools um, um, like, like some podcasting tools. One is called Castopod um, that, that use ActivityPub for a federation, also Peertube. Um, but so far there wasn't any, or there is no tool that allows them to kind of collaborate on a shared um, repository of their media and to, to transfer audiences. Like one of the features that was, um, uh, that was imagined in the beginning is to have like on the existing platforms like embed widgets in the sidebars or something where you'd reference new content from the network and you'd, you'd have similar content to something that is, that is displayed there to, to be, be able to exchange audiences and to, to engage in, in, in better ways with, with um, um, people across these existing platforms. Um, yeah, and on the technical level, we have very different um, tools that are used. We have different standards, like the most common likely is RSS that is used to, to syndicate content. Um, RSS works quite well and for a very long time, but RSS also is um, a very limited specification. And most of these platforms, when they use RSS, they add custom things on top and there's not many standards. With ActivityPub, actually, it's kind of similar, even if it's a much more modern project that, um, well, mostly when you talk about ActivityPub, people mean Mastodon, um, which is like the biggest project, but there are others like Peertube or Castopod that have custom extensions to the ActivityPub protocol to, to add more media style uh, metadata and so on. So out of all this, the uh, Repco project was created um, with the idea to aggregate content from these different outlets to replicate um, 
um, repositories between nodes, which also um, serves as a way to, to, to back up things. Another like challenge for these smallish outlets often is that um, once funding runs out or once people start to do other things, we have these repositories of content in the internet, like these old Web 2.0 or Web 1.0 sites, but um, they are not forever usually. Like, they, they, they drop out of the internet after five years or ten years and then things actually get lost this way. So, um, yeah, we want to aggregate the content, we want to preserve the content and to replicate it between these nodes. And then on top we can create shared indexes to, to offer better ways to browse content through different platforms. And um, a future thing also is to connect um, um, services that add more um, metadata or value to these platforms like transcription, automatic transcription of, of audio and video or translation. Um, and the results of this, that this was the, the initial plan, should be embedded back into these platforms because they all didn't really, and out of many reasons of course, want to kind of uh, put all their weight into some new tool that would solve the problems they have but instead like um, expand the, the existing offers part by part. So um, basically we in a way want to bridge web 1.0 or 2.0 apps into um, a new um, uh, format that allows to seamlessly exchange the data. And for this we, um, after some evaluation, decided to build on tools that are um, topic, uh, a big topic in, in, in this forum here. Um, we decided um, if, we, if we do do this, we want the data that we ingest once it's in the new system to be um, authenticated, to be self-verifying, and uh, to be able to, to replicate and exchange it in a trustless, in a trustless way. Um, so the basic workflow that we, that we um, came up with is we want to ingest the, the existing content, um, store this in the original format, first of all, assign it content IDs everywhere and then map it onto a shared data format to then be able to query it um, in, a, in, a, in a common or in, a, in, a, um, in the same way no matter if the data comes from RSS or comes from ActivityPub or whatever other data sources likely will be developed in the future. Um, one problem that we, um, or one, not one challenge that we um, thought about quite a lot early on is how to deal with IDs. Um, content IDs are nice, but they are immutable and they um, only can um, uh, yeah, re refer to a single revision. We needed, of course, also mutable um, identifiers because things change and these um, existing platforms might have updates. And um, what we came up with, and which I think is quite common and works out quite well, is not to um, have a new single ID for each entry, but um, to have entity URIs, and there can be multiple of them because Sometimes the, the content that we ingest already comes, came through a couple of different services on the way and then there might be mutable, uh, uh, multiple identifiers and so we basically st store all of them and whenever we import something new and when we find um, an existing match we assign the same internal um, ID to this content. Um, yeah, so how does the system work? I'll just go through a couple of um, examples. Um, we have the existing data sources, which is, might be RSS, ActivityPub, also a WordPress API is something we built in Adapter for because quite a few of these platforms use WordPress and WordPress offers them a REST API. Um, RDF also, we don't have something for that yet, but this is like on the, on the roadmap, especially once you move more towards like public broadcasters and, and bigger media outlets, there are some established metadata standards in, in, in RDF. So first we um, fetch the, the content and then basically like a caching layer we, we store the, the, the content exactly as, as retrieved. This allows us uh, in the next step, oh, why is it not working? Yep. Um, to, and then, no, the next step then is to map this original content onto a shared data format. This actually was one of the longer running things in this process to kind of arrive at this shared data format. This certainly will um, develop further because we store the original content we can iterate on that because we can run a remapping step that would just go through all the stored source records and 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 recreate the the, the mapped record on mapped records on on top um, this already proved quite valuable to to be able to iterate without contacting the original apis again and again which can be quite slow some of them had have rates lim rate limits and so on 
So now we have um, the set of source records, we have the set of um, mapped records that have the, the, the custom types here, we have content items and media assets, um, um, and then um, we do something that is, I think, becoming something of a, like a common pattern in, in many of these projects building on, on IPLD um, and, and IPFS tech these days. We um, store these, these records in, we, we call it commits, um, where we um, uh, sign the list of content IDs included in a commit and add um, a UCAN proof um, to, to validate um, the, the capability. Um, so this basically makes the system multi-writer um, because like uh, each repository, so the, the basic um, organization um, of the content is repositories and repositories are identified by a um, key pair basically. We use DITs, decentralized identifiers, but only support um, the, the key pair method. Um, maybe we'll also, we're not sure about if we actually need the DID abstraction because we only ever use key pairs so far. But anyway, um, we have a key pair that identifies the repository and then through um, UCANs um, we can create additional capabilities that allow other key pairs to publish into that repository. And um, this uh, basically allows to um, have different writers, so one key pair that per device that, that is allowed to write into the repository. Um, and um, yeah, so the commits are just um, a list of content IDs plus a signature plus um, the, the, the UCAN proof. And in the end, this repository then is um, basically an append-only log of commits. And uh, the, the, uh, after each commit, the repository has a new head, which is the, the content ID of the latest um, commit. And this is a very um, simple structure that um, makes it very straightforward to replicate this content from one node to the other, which is um, what we do. Oh, there's one slide in between. Um, so, um, so replication comes in a second. Um, what then happens at, at each node is that we index all this content, no matter from what repository, and this is basically a two-step process. The first step is the, the, the lower data model, as we call it, where we have the entities, the revisions, commits, repos, the, the UCAN proofs. Um, this is basically independent of the data that is actually in there. And then um, we have the domain data model part, um, which is the, the shared data model that was or is being developed in this uh, project. This is in a way specific. We're thinking about um, adding like extension points to this. This would basically be the step to make this whole project um, uh, be usable for other things as well. We did not do that initially kind of to, to keep the abstraction low and to first get our product ready, but this would be quite straightforward likely to add. Um, yeah, and this is currently then indexed in a SQL database. Um, which uh, through some tooling gives us like automated um, GraphQL queries. This is all public read-only data which makes it quite simple to query it from, from front-ends then. So basically on, on, this, on each node there's, there's two, two APIs to talk uh, with. Uh, the first is the, the replication API um, which is a, a very simple HTTP API um, where you um, uh, can just uh, uh, the repo is treated as an append only log and you can just uh, say give me all uh, new content since the last commit that I know of and then uh, the node replies with the car stream of um, all the commits the proofs and the content in within and on uh, on receiving on the receiving end everything is validated the signatures the proofs and so on um, so there is no trust involved in the in the transport and the other API that we have is, the, is a GraphQL API that translates to SQL queries um, that is used in, in frontends and, and the embed widgets that I talked about that allow to kind of on, on an existing platform have this sidebar widget or so on where you display new, new content from, from the system. Um, yeah, all this works very well. However, um, and this is like the, the crossover to the data transfer part that uh, we've been thinking about a lot recently is 
um, we have this split in these APIs. We have the, the replication API that is very simple, uh, but is verified and authenticated end to end. And then we have the, 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 the querying API, um, which is uh, very expressive and quite simple to use. You can have this nested GraphQL queries with filters and selectors and so on, but this is all unverified. You, you uh, uh, post a GraphQL query, you get back JSON and, and that's it. And um, this is a gap that doesn't matter too much for mu some use cases. However, once we get to bigger repos and also once we want to move more logic to the to the edge or to the client. So currently the nodes are more imagined as like classic server software that runs somewhere, ingests content, talks with other bigger nodes and then clients and front ends use the, the, the query API. Um, we'd like to, to, to bridge this gap more to be able to do better caching and to push validation and authentication to the edge or to the client. And um, so what we're thinking at the moment and what I think is interesting also in all this data transfer um, um, uh, talk and discussion is um, we're thinking about having the, the query API only ever return content IDs and then have the data transfer protocol resolve these content IDs. And I think this is something that will also come up in other, other contexts because like for example in, in Iro there was a lot of talk we want to only ever just exchange lists of, of blocks and, and, and hashes and nothing else. And um, I think it's a quite interesting um, point to think of the query layer as something separate from the data transfer layer and have the query layer be app specific. So um, there also, like even like with uh, dark queries, uh, there is some expressiveness to it but also oftenly you will deviate from the strict like selector model that, that you can do with IPLD selectors. You want app specific queries that, or, or like full text search for example, that doesn't align to graph queries at all usually. And um, so what we're thinking is um, having a query layer that is separate from the data transfer layer but that returns only the content IDs of the content within uh, plus potentially some metadata like um, snippets for, for, um, um, for full text search or something like that and then use a data transfer layer for, um, to exchange the actual content um, and then the, the query layer will likely be quite app specific and um, very different between different apps. However, that data transfer layer could then also be something where different apps can collaborate on the most efficient strategies and and once you take out the, the query part a bit more, it becomes um, a much simpler layer. And um, yeah, this was one of the things we're um, uh, thinking about, not yet working on, but thinking about how to move this um, further in the future. Because then all, like if you get the results of the, of the query, you can also decide locally or look up locally what part of the results do I already have cached or, or stored locally and then only fetch the, the rest. And then also um, this opens the door to, to, to fetch from multiple parties the results. Um, yeah. So this is the, like, the data transfer things we're thinking about in this project. Um, we have also some other future ideas. We want to have um, persistent subscriptions on the repositories so that you, via, via also a simple HTTP API, you can subscribe to a repository and get notified of changes, um, which makes it very easy to, to integrate other services on top like transcription or translation services that would listen on incoming things, create the jobs and push back the results into the repo. And for these jobs, we're also quite actively following um, what is being discussed in the UCAN invocation uh, drafts. Um, I think there is a talk in the next days in, uh, about IPVM. Um, yeah, this is uh, uh, something we are very curious about. Um, yeah, uh, this is it. I will show you um, a very, not a demo, but just a quick impression of how things look like at the moment. This is the demo instance that's running at the moment. We have um, different nodes running this one. Uh, indexes content from this uh, cultural broadcasting archive in Austria. Um, this is another one that indexes content from uh, the Freie Radios Net, uh, the, the German radio network, uh, community radio network. And then we have a shared instance 
that uh, uh, replicates the different nodes together. Um, yeah, the front end is still a, a work in progress, um, but uh, basically you have this uh, browsing interface where all the content floats in and uh, you can listen to audio and uh, uh, have some filters. This is all still work in progress, but the basic system works and uh, once things flow together from the different nodes, um, it's all authenticated and validated. Of course, because most of the, con of the content comes from external services, uh, there is an initial um, uh, point of trust, basically, where you have to trust the node that does the ingest part. Um, and the, the, the idea there is to make this software very uh, simple to run so that it can run um, socially close to the source. So not necessarily technically, but that there, is, uh, that there are social trust relations towards the, the ingest nodes um, from the original creators, and then from there on it can all flow in the uh, authenticated and validated, verified ways. Yeah, that's it. Um, thank you. If you have any questions? So on the query with proofs thing, um, I'm just trying to imagine how that works in my head. Are you able to use like a generic full text index and then find the relevant CIDs and send those back or do you need to have a like IPLD aware index? Um, yeah, this is basically the idea. We'd have a regular, like any full text search engine. There's some quite interesting uh, Rust projects in that regard also if you don't want to use the big and resource intensive uh, elastic search, which is kind of the standard in many places. And then uh, those would um, index uh, the, the, the content, you'd likely have to do some schema mapping um, again to, to do that in a nice way. And then you, for each document, you not necessarily the SID, but likely the mutable ID, and then through the existing database, map that to the CIDs, and then return the list of CIDs, plus likely some metadata structure that would include um, something like snippets or scores. And then um, you could uh, locally just uh, fetch all the SIDs, um, um, and, and then store them um, through, the, through the data or replication API. Just, just two things. One is this project is so awesome. I, before I was uh, doing this stuff, I had about a 10-year career in the nonprofit sector and intimately familiar with the disappearance of data <laughs> in small organizations with low tech competence like not a lot of tech competencies. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, the, and then the other thing is just, yeah, the, the pattern you talked about with the query protocol, um, it's interesting. I don't know, were you at IPFS thing a year no. ago? We, we, we even, we had a name that was proposed, the man, manifest, pattern, manifest pattern, which is like, mm -hmm. uh, rather than do a data transfer upfront, do a query to get a list of SIDs and then go from there. There's some challenges around verifiability, but it's still, it's definitely a good approach. And it also makes multi-party data transfer pretty, pretty accessible, so, yeah. Yeah, I think it also would align quite nicely to something like persistent queries, where you, like, like a pu publish subscribe system, where you subscribe to some topics or, or subset of the data and then get notified of new CIDs and then request them through the usual means. Yeah. For sure. Uh, thanks, um, I might've missed this, but, um, do you, when you said the ingest, do you crawl these RSS feeds uh, from people who have agreed to get it or do you just crawl what you think is valuable? Um, so currently these like public demo instances, they, they are like the, the, the data that is crawled there was part of the project or of the, like this, the, the, the whole thing started with some funding from the European Cultural Foundation um, that wanted to kind of connect different media outlets and um, so these are all part of the project. Um, how this would evolve um, is I think an open question. You could uh, treat it as like a general RSS um, a feed, feed reader thing where you just uh, put in any feeds you wanted to. Um, the idea so far is more that um, it would be, as I said, like socially close to the, to the publishers. So um, how exactly that would turn out is um, not defined yet. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Thank you very much. Um, this is a young project. It's still quite prototypey and alpha. Um, if you know people or are yourself interested in advancing this further, please, please uh, contact us. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>